friends and fellow makers. My name is Tiffany and I am the owner and creator behind Desert Bath Company. I have been waiting so long to create this channel because I want to share with you some of my DIY recipes, some of behind the scenes behind my crazy bath bomb designs, as well as some tips and tricks along the way. I launched Desert Bath Company back in 2019 and every year I think I'm prepared for the holiday season and then it sneaks up on me so fast. So this year I am starting Christmas the beginning of October and I have so many bath bomb designs I want to share with you guys. Today I'm going to be starting out with the candy cane bath bomb. This was one of the very first Christmas bath bomb designs that I came out with in 2019 and it is still a favorite to this day. So every year I've got to bring back the candy cane bath bomb because the way it bleeds in the tub, the way it smells and everything is just so awesome about it. I'll show you guys how I make it and how I paint it and we'll do a little demo in the tub. So stay tuned. So this is the candy cane mold I've been using. Um, this is the third year in a row I will be using this candy cane mold and it's still in great shape. So I actually prefer the vacuum form molds. They seem to release a lot better than the 3D molds do. However, you know, do what works best for you, but I tend to try to stay away from the 3D molds. They do have a lot of grooves in them and they don't offer as smooth of a design. And once again, like I said, they just don't release as well. These ones work great. Any vacuum formed plastic mold will usually do as long as it doesn't have too crazy or deep of detail and this one is perfect it's got you know the ribbed spots for the candy cane look but they are not too deep or too detailed to where um, they won't come out in the mold so without further ado let's get started so the scent i am working with today is called twisted peppermint this is a phenomenal bath and body works dupe that Aztec Candle and Soap Supplies um, did. It smells just like Twisted Peppermint from Bath and Body Works. Hands down, one of my, probably my favorite peppermint scent. It's kind of like a sweet peppermint. It's not a um, super herbal, like the peppermint scent you get from essential oils. It's got a little bit more sweet sugary scent to it. And it's more of a, a Christmas peppermint, if, if you will. So this is the fragrance we'll be using. And um, just as a reminder, make sure that any fragrances you are using are considered bath and body safe. The suppliers always listed on their website. I will link this supplier in the description box below in case you guys are interested in shopping some of their fragrances. Keep in mind, this is actually a pretty large batch. This is not the size you would want to go with if you are simply just trying this at home. Definitely cut it down to about a fourth or so. I should get about between 20 and 25 candy cane bath bombs out of um, what I call a 2,500 gram batch. Um, I always just go off of the baking soda amount because then the citric acid is half of that and then everything else just follows. I've completely mastered my recipe this way. There's tons of recipes out there, guys. It's all about what works for you and what works for your environment. Humidity is a factor. Some people even use humidifiers to try to combat some of the moisture in the air. So now we are going to measure out our liquid ingredients. The oil I prefer with my bath bombs is sunflower oil. You can use 
hemp oil, you can use avocado oil, coconut oil. There's tons of different oils you can use. I actually love to infuse this oil with organic chamomile flowers to add just an extra little botanical benefit in my bath bomb. Another very important ingredient is polysorbate 80. You'll need this to help disperse the oils in the tub as well as prevent any colorant from clinging to the tub or staining any of your customers. So I use just one tablespoon of that and now while I don't have any colorant in my actual bath bomb mix right now, this is more so for when I go to paint my bath bomb. I paint with a crimson, a crimson red and a little bit of a red 40 and you'll see why when I demo it in the tub. down with some witch hazel. Some people use water, some people use 50% alcohol or 99% alcohol. I choose witch hazel. I know that's not most people's preference, but that is what works best for me. So I just did about 35 spritz of witch hazel with my hermit headquarters sprayer. I actually love this bottle. As you can see, it's starting to kind of bind a little bit. It's clumping up around the edges. This is when I know it is at the perfect consistency for molding. So to my surprise, um, I got 20 candy canes on this tray and actually had to grab another one and um, got a total of 30 candy canes out of a 2,500 gram batch. Once again, I say 2,500 grams because that's the amount of baking soda I use. That is not the total weight of the batch I used. And I try not to move these around too much on the tray while they are drying. These are going to be very fragile until they are dry, even when they are dry because of how thin, thin this part is. Um, they tend to break pretty easily, so we want to make sure that we are not touching those until they are fully dry. So we'll come back in about two to three hours and we'll add some paint. You'll see here I have these little lips that I molded. and. That's because I had a little bit of bath bomb mix left over. I always hang on to some mini bath bomb molds to make use of the little bit of bath bomb mix that might be left over from a batch. And then I'll take these and I'll give them out as little customer gifts or put them in a little pack of mini bath bombs. So no waste, not wasting any of our bath bomb mix. All right, so now that our candy canes are dry, we are gonna move on to painting them. As I mentioned before, I'm going to do a combination of a Red 40 dye and a mica powder to paint these stripes on these beautiful candy canes. Now the reason why I'm doing a dye plus a mica powder is because I want these to bleed in the tub as if they have embeds inside of them. These are way too fragile of a mold and too thin of a mold to actually pack embeds in. I would say never actually paint your bath bombs just with a dye. 
you'll see I use just a little bit of red 40 dye because a little bit goes a long ways. And then I do mostly the crimson red wine mica powder for the colorant. Like I said, the red 40 dye will just bleed through your bath bomb. And while that might work for some designs, that's not the look I'm going for with my candy canes. So then here I have a little container. I put all of my, my mixes in containers like this because it actually seals it and the 99% alcohol won't it all evaporate. So the next time I need to use this color, I still have a little bit of 99% alcohol left. And once again, less waste. You can buy these little containers on Amazon. I will put a link in the description box below. And that, my friends, concludes our candy cane bath bomb video. If you like this type of content, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Toodaloo!